Welcome to Cha Cha's Kingdom. Today I want to show you this dish that's called Shiokoji Chicken Cutlet. I have to tell you, I so miss this restaurant, a hole in the wall that's very close to my kids' elementary school when we were in Taiwan. They have this dish, this dish, the Shiokoji Chicken Cutlet. It was so good, and I miss it so much. And because of the COVID, we can't go back to visit. So I was determined to figure out how to make this dish. And I did ask the owner, the chef, how they made it, why it was so good, so flavorful. It was just a clean chicken cutlet, you know? Why is it so flavorful? It's not fried or anything. And they said, "Well, the magic is the shiokoji." Okay. That's easy. So I went to the store, looked for shiokoji, and got the shiokoji, and I was super excited. And then I made it, and I was like, I was disappointed, but it was not right. Something's missing. And I tried different brand, and still I can't get that flavor. And you know me, that really kills me, right? So I decided. I'm gonna start from the very beginning, right? So I am going to ferment my own shiokoji because why? According to my understanding about fer fermentation, when I ferment food, the food actually tastes the best with the most fragrant when it's done fermenting till the three to six months, and after that, it started losing some magic. And that's why the pickles from your neighbors always tasted better than the one from the shelf because they're fresher. Anyways, long story short, so I made my own shiokoji and I did it, and oh my god, that is the game changer. Okay, the chicken cutlet—you really don't need anything else. You only need the shiokoji, and it will tenderize and make it juicy, and then also it gives you that. I know it gets old, but then I'm telling you, it's the flavor of. Umami. Okay, it's like I marinated with a bowl of MSG. Amazing. Only shiokoji is actually very healthy for you, and it's low sodium. So of course you can buy the shiokoji from the store. The difference is though, the store-bought shiokoji a lot of time they have to add in some alcohol or they bring up the temperature of the shiokoji so that they can extend the shelf life. But the actions will actually kill or lower the Activity of the probiotics or the enzymes in the shiokoji. That it's just a tasty sauce for you to marinate your food. The shiokoji we make at home is life and full of enzymes and the probiotics. So it's not just the taste of the shiokoji that's good. Those enzymes, those probiotics, they will go in to your food and tenderize it and create magical flavor for your food. Now I told you so much about this amazing shiokoji. If you also like to make your own, which I highly recommend, because this is like the easiest fermented food that you can make at home. There are only three ingredients, and there is really, literally, nothing you can do to mess it up. I'll include a link here or in the description box so you can check it out and make your own shiokoji. Before we get started, would you like, share, and subscribe, and turn on the little bell for notifications? Now let's get started. Here are the ingredients for today. But the only things that you really need is the shiokoji and the chicken legs. The other thing is because of the video, and also you know I like to go fancy or go home, so I want to make some sauce on top of it. But it's really all optional, which are the garlic, the ginger. The green onions and some goose fat or any cooking oil. Whenever I buy the chicken legs, I like to buy the whole chicken legs with the bone in, and you can do it like me. I like to debone at home, or you can have your butcher to debone it for you. But either way, keep the bones because those bones can be useful whenever you want to make a simple chicken bone broth. And today we're gonna first debone my chicken, and then we're gonna marinate it with the shiokoji. When it comes to deboning, a lot of th people think of it as a big job, so they take out their most impressive knife. But really, you need a smaller knife because it's easier to maneuver. And also, don't forget to hone your knife before you do this, because you want your knife to be sharp. And what you do is, you see the bone, you just kind of slice it open, and you can feel the bone just go against the bone, and kind of slice the 
technique off. Okay, now you have your chicken cutlet. Well, you'll see there's some excess uh, skin right here, and normally this is the most ugly with a lot of hair on, so I like to cut them off. And then still, I like to rinse it with water and pat dry because um, you see there's always some small hair on the skin. I want to wash it off. When I'm washing, I like to kind of pinch it a little bit so I can pinch away the fine hair. And then we're gonna pet dry the chicken. We're gonna use the knife to kind of, because some of the part is thicker, we're gonna cut it open so it's easier to cook. And, and also when you pan fry, because you cut the uh, tendon off so they won't curl up too much. Now we're gonna marinate with the shiokoji. Both sides need to be marinated. Remember, massage it, make sure it's evenly spread out and the skin side too. If you have room, you can also put in your chicken bones in there. That way when you make the chicken bone broth, it gives you umami taste too. Now if you have vacuum seal box, you can vacuum seal and make sure the marinade goes in even better and faster. But if you don't, that's totally fine because shiokoji really, it'll do the work for you. Now we're gonna put it in the fridge overnight to up to three nights and then we can cook it. Okay, I already marinated some chicken legs yesterday, so today we're gonna just go ahead and pan fry it. Some people ask if they can cook it in the oven or they can sous vide it. And the truth is, you really don't need to because the shiokoji already did the magic. This chicken is as tender as it can be, as juicy as it can be already. So even sous vide wouldn't make it even better. So you really don't need to do it. And pan fry on the stove top is the fastest, easiest way and it's super delicious, trust me. Having said that, if you wanna make a bigger batch, then I think it's a good idea to sous vide a whole bunch of them and vacuum seal and put it in the freezer. It's your own frozen, ready to eat food. Okay, shiokoji is so amazing. Whatever food that you marinate it in, it gives you juiciness, tenderness, and super flavorful. But there's one trick though. With shiokoji, it's kind of rice liquid in there, so it gives you this starchy liquid that you marinate in. So every food that you marinate with shiokoji, you need to rinse it all, rinse it really clean before you cook it. Okay, and then when you're cooking it, it needs to be low heat. You want to make sure it's low heat until the food is all the way cooked and then you turn the heat up a little bit to get color on the food. Now let's go rinse the shiokoji off my chicken. You want to make sure you rinse all the rice off the chicken and you really don't need to worry about not having enough flavor because the amazing flavor is already all in the meat. Now just pat it dry and then we're ready to cook. All right, let's heat up our pan. If you have non-stick pan, go ahead and use non-stick. Um, I have this stainless steel pan that is big enough for a family of four, so I'm gonna use this one. And the trick to get the stainless steel pan non-stick is that you have to heat it up really well and then put your oil in there. So we're gonna be patient and wait for it. Now the pan is hot enough, we're gonna pour in some oil. Coat the bottom of the pan. And now we're gonna put in the chicken, skin side up first. Turn the heat to low. So we cover it because, like I said, we need low heat. So I wanna create also some kind of steam situation in there to help cooking the chicken through. And it's gonna take about five minutes each side. So meanwhile, we're gonna make some sauce to go on top of the shiokoji chicken cutlet. First, we're gonna cut up some green onions. And then we're gonna grate some garlic and then some ginger. A little bit of salt 
And now, with low heat, we're gonna heat up some goose fat or any cooking oil. It's five minutes now, so we're gonna flip the chicken. Cover and let it cook for another five minutes. Now the oil is about 325 degrees. We're gonna turn the heat off. If you don't have a thermometer, when you see the oil is smoking, then that's ready. Now pour it right in. Mix, and our sauce is done. Now it's been five minutes each side. We're gonna open the lid and then we're gonna get the color on the chicken. So we're gonna turn the heat up. You see all the juice from the chicken. We're gonna want it to evaporate and then get the color onto the skin. Now you see most of the juice is evaporated. I'm gonna turn the heat to medium and just keep my eyes on it so I don't burn it too fast. Okay, I think we're ready. I don't need it to be super brown because I'm gonna have sauce on top of it. Place it skin side down. Now the trick is when you're gonna cut something really hot and your hands cannot handle it, place some cold water next to you. It will build up your tolerance. And then we're gonna drizzle some of the yummy sauce that we made. But really, with or without this sauce, it's gonna be super delicious. There we go. Here comes my favorite moment. Mm. This is so good. There's no way anyone would guess that there's only one ingredient, which is just the shiokoji that you put in to marinate that chicken. Because the flavor is so complex, and then the savory, and the roundness of the sweetness, the umami, everything in that one bite, okay? And the chicken itself, it's so juicy and tender. You don't need to sous vide it, it just pan fry because the shiokoji already did the magic for you. Okay, if any recipe, you need to give this recipe a try. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this recipe or this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on the little bell for notifications. Thank you, I'll see you next time. I just wanna show you, I used the bone to make a quick, simple chicken bone broth, so we can have a little soup for the dinner, along with the chicken cutlet. Uh, we're gonna take the bone out. It's been cooked for like an hour and I'm gonna add a little more water in there. Once it's boiled, you put in some dry seaweed, the cut wakame seaweed, and some green onion, some salt, and then you have yourself some yummy seaweed soup made with chicken bone broth. And see how quickly the seaweed rehydrated and expanded. And this is so yummy and nutritious.